Scranton is the sixth largest city in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It is the county seat of Lackawanna County in northeastern Pennsylvania's Wyoming Valley and hosts a federal court building. With a population of 77,291, it is the largest city in the Scranton Wilkes Barre Hazleton, PA Metropolitan Statistical Area, which has a population of about 570,000. Scranton is the geographic and cultural center of the Lackawanna River Valley, and the largest of the former anthracite coal mining communities in a contiguous quilt work that also includes Wilkes Barre, Nanticoke, Pittston, and Carbondale. Scranton was incorporated on February 14, 1856, as a borough in Luzerne County and as a city on April 23, 1866. It became a major industrial city, a center of mining and railroads, and attracted thousands of new immigrants. It was the site of the Scranton General Strike in 1877. People in northern Luzerne County sought a new county in 1839 but the Wilkes-Barre area resisted losing its assets. Lackawanna County did not gain independent status until 1878. Under legislation allowing the issue to be voted by residents of the proposed territory, voters favored the new county by a proportion of 6 to 1, with Scranton residents providing the major support. The city was designated as the county seat when Lackawanna County was established in 1878, and a judicial district was authorized in 1879. The city took its first step toward earning its reputation as the electric city when electric lights were introduced in 1880 at Dixon Locomotive Works. Six years later, the nation's first streetcars powered exclusively by electricity began operating in the city. Reverend David Spencer, a local Baptist minister, later proclaimed Scranton as the electric city. History. Topic: Pre-industrial 1776 to 1845. Present-day Scranton and its surrounding area had been long inhabited by the native Lenape tribe, from whose language Lackawanna or Lackawanna, meaning stream that forks, is derived. In 1778, Isaac Tripp, the area's first known European-American settler, built his home here. It still stands in North Scranton, formerly a separate town known as Providence. More settlers from Connecticut came to the area in the late 18th and early 19th centuries after the American Revolutionary War, as their state claimed this area as part of their colonial charter. They gradually established mills and other small businesses in a village that became known as Slocum Hollow. People in the village during this time carried the traits and accent of their New England settlers, which were somewhat different from most of Pennsylvania. Some area settlers from Connecticut participated in what was known as the Pennamite Wars, where settlers competed for control of the territory which had been included in royal colonial land grants to both states. This claim between Connecticut and Pennsylvania was settled by negotiation with the federal government after independence. Topic arrival of industry 1846 to 1899 Though anthracite coal was being mined in Carbondale to the north and Wilkes-Barre to the south, the industries that precipitated the city's early rapid growth were iron and steel. In the 1840s, brothers Selden T. and George W. Scranton, who had worked at Oxford Furnace in Belvedere, New Jersey, founded what would become Lackawanna Iron and Coal, later developing as the Lackawanna Steel Company. It initially started producing iron nails, but that venture failed due to low-quality iron. The Erie Railroad's construction in New York State was delayed by its having to acquire iron rails as imports from England. The Scranton's firm decided to switch its focus to producing T-rails for the Erie. The company soon became a major producer of rails for the rapidly expanding railroads. In 1851, the Scrantons built the Lackawanna and Western Railroad L &W northward, with recent Irish immigrants supplying most of the labor, to meet the Erie Railroad in Great Bend, Pennsylvania. Thus they could transport manufactured rails from the Lackawanna Valley to New York and the Midwest. They also invested in coal mining operations in the city to fuel their steel operations, and to market it to businesses. In 1856, they expanded the railroad eastward as the Delaware, Lackawanna and Western Railroad DL &W, in order to tap into the New York City metropolitan market. This railroad, with its hub in Scranton, would be Scranton's largest employer for almost 100 years. 
The Pennsylvania Coal Company built a gravity railroad in the 1850s through the city for the purpose of transporting coal. The gravity railroad was replaced by a steam railroad built in 1886 by the Erie and Wyoming Valley Railroad later absorbed by the Erie Railroad. The Delaware and Hudson D &H Canal Company, which had its own gravity railroad from Carbondale to Honesdale, built a steam railroad that entered Scranton in 1863. During this short period of time, the city rapidly transformed from a small, agrarian-based village of people with New England roots to a multicultural, industrial-based city. From 1860 to 1900, the city's population increased more than tenfold. Most new immigrants, such as the Irish, Italians, and South Germans and Polish, were Catholic, a contrast to the majority Protestant early settlers of colonial descent. National, ethnic, religious and class differences were wrapped into political affiliations, with many new immigrants joining the Democratic Party and, for a time in the late 1870s, the Greenbacker Labour Party. In 1856, the borough of Scranton was officially incorporated. It was incorporated as a city of 35,000 in 1866 in Luzerne County, when the surrounding boroughs of Hyde Park now part of the city's west side and Providence now part of North Scranton were merged with Scranton. Twelve years later in 1878, the state passed a law enabling creation of new counties where a county's population surpassed 150,000, as did Luzerne's. The law appeared to enable the creation of Lackawanna County, and there was considerable political agitation around the authorizing process. Scranton was designated by the state legislature as the county seat of the newly formed county, which was also established as a separate judicial district, with state judges moving over from Luzerne County after courts were organized in October 1878. This was the last county in the state to be organized. Creation of the new county, which enabled both more local control and political patronage, helped begin the Scranton General Strike of 1877. This was in part due to the larger Great Railroad Strike, in which railroad workers began to organize and participate in walkouts after wage cuts in Martinsburg, West Virginia. The national economy had lagged since the Panic of 1873, and workers in many industries struggled with low wages and intermittent work. In Scranton, mineworkers followed the railroad men off the job, as did others. A protest of 5,000 strikers ended in violence, with a total of four men killed, and 20 to 50 injured, including the mayor. He had established a militia, but called for help from the governor and state militia. Governor John Hartranft eventually brought in federal troops to quell the strike. The workers gained nothing in wages, but began to organize more purposefully into labor unions that could wield more power. The nation's first successful, continuously operating electrified streetcar trolley system was established in the city in 1886, inspiring the nickname, The Electric City. In 1896, the city's various streetcar companies were consolidated into the Scranton Railway Company, which ran trolleys until 1954. By 1890, three other railroads had built lines to tap into the rich supply of coal in and around the city, including the Erie Railroad, the Central Railroad of New Jersey and finally the New York, Ontario and Western Railway As the vast rail network spread above ground, an even larger network of railways served the rapidly expanding system of coal veins underground. Miners, who in the early years were typically Welsh and Irish, were hired as cheaply as possible by the coal barons. The workers endured low pay, long hours and unsafe working conditions. Children as young as eight or nine worked 14-hour days separating slate from coal in the breakers. Often, the workers were forced to use company-provided housing and purchase food and other goods from stores owned by the coal companies. With hundreds of thousands of immigrants arriving in the industrial cities, mine owners did not have to search for labor and workers struggled to keep their positions. Later miners came from Italy and Eastern Europe, which people fled because of poverty and lack of jobs. Business was booming at the end of the 19th century. The tonnage of coal mined increased virtually every year, as did the steel manufactured by the Lackawanna Steel Company. At one point the company had the largest steel plant in the United States, and it was still the second largest producer at the turn of the 20th century. By 1900, the city had a population of more than 100,000. In the late 1890s, Scranton was home to a series of early International League baseball teams. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Labor History. 
Given its industrial basis, Scranton has had a notable labor history. Various coal worker unions struggled throughout the coal mining era to improve working conditions, raise wages, and guarantee fair treatment for workers. The Panic of 1873 and other economic difficulties caused a national recession and loss of business. As the economy contracted, the railroad companies reduced wages of workers in most classes while sometimes reserving raises for their top management. A major strike of railroad workers in August 1877, part of the Great Railroad Strike, attracted workers from the steel industry and mining as well, and developed as the Scranton General Strike. Four rioters were killed during unrest during the strike, after the mayor mustered a militia. With violence suppressed by militia and federal troops, workers finally returned to their jobs, not able to gain any economic relief. William Walker Scranton, from the prominent family, was then general manager of Lackawanna Iron and Coal. He later founded Scranton Steel Company. The labor issues and growth of industry in Scranton contributed to Lackawanna County being established by the state legislature in 1878, with territory taken from Luzerne County. Scranton was designated as the county seat, this strengthened its local government. The unions failed to gain higher wages that year, but in 1878 they elected labor leader Terence V. Powderly of the Knights of Labor as mayor of Scranton. After that, he became national leader of the Coal, a predominantly Catholic organization that had a peak membership of 700,000 about 1880. While the Catholic Church had prohibited membership in secret organizations since the mid-18th century, by the late 1880s with the influence of Archbishop James Gibbons of Baltimore, Maryland, it supported the Knights of Labor as representing workingmen and union organizing. The landmark coal strike of 1902, was called by anthracite miners across the region and led by the United Mine Workers under John Mitchell. The strike was settled by a compromise brokered by President Theodore Roosevelt. A statue of John Mitchell was installed in his honor on the grounds of the Lackawanna County Courthouse in Scranton, the site of the coal strike of 1902 negotiations in which President Roosevelt participated. Because of the significance of these negotiations, the statue and the courthouse were added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1997. John Mitchell is buried in Cathedral Cemetery in Scranton. Topic growth, prosperity and consequences 1900 to 1945 By the United States Census of 1900, the population of Scranton was about 102,026, making it the third largest city in Pennsylvania and 38th largest U.S. city. At the turn of the 20th century, wealthy businessmen and industrialists built impressive Victorian mansions in the Hill and Green Ridge sections of the city. Most were descended from colonists and belonged to the Republican Party. The industrial workers, who tended to be later immigrants from Ireland and southern and eastern Europe, were predominantly Catholic. With a flood of immigrants in the market, they suffered poor working conditions and wages. In 1902, the dwindling local iron ore supply, labor issues, and an aging plant cost the city the industry on which it was founded. The Lackawanna Steel Company and many of its workers were moved to Lackawanna, New York, developed on Lake Erie just south of Buffalo. With a port on the lake, the company could receive iron ore shipped from the Mesabi Range in Minnesota, which was being newly mined. Scranton forged ahead as the capital of the anthracite coal industry. Attracting the thousands of workers needed to mine coal, the city developed new neighborhoods dominated by Italian and Eastern European immigrants, who brought their foods, cultures and religions. Many of the immigrants joined the Democratic Party. Their national churches and neighborhoods were part of the history of the city. Several Catholic and Orthodox churches were founded and built during this period. A substantial Jewish community was also established, with most members coming from the Russian Empire and Eastern Europe. Working conditions for miners were improved by the efforts of labor leaders such as John Mitchell, who led the United Mine Workers. The sub-surface mining weakened whole neighborhoods, however, damaging homes, schools, and businesses when the land collapsed. In 1913 the state passed the Davis Act to establish the Bureau of Surface Support in Scranton. Because of the difficulty in dealing with the coal companies, citizens organized the Scranton Surface Protection Association, chartered by the Court of Common Pleas on November 24, 1913 to protect the lives and property of the citizens of the city of Scranton and the streets of said city from injury, loss and damage caused by mining and mine caves. In 1915 and 1917, the city and Commonwealth sought injunctions to prevent coal companies from undermining city streets but lost their cases. 
North Main Avenue and Boulevard Avenue, both entitled to surface support, caved in as a result of court decisions that went against civil authorities and allowed the coal companies to continue their operations. The case of Penman v. Jones came out differently. The Lackawanna Iron and Coal Co. had leased coal lands to the Lackawanna Iron and Steel Co., an allied interest, which passed the leases on to the Scranton Coal Co. Areas of central Scranton, the Hill Section, South Side, Pine Brook, Green Ridge and Hyde Park were affected by their mining activities. Mr. Penman was the private property owner in the case. The coal operators were defeated in this case. The public transportation system began to expand beyond the trolley lines pioneered by predecessors of the Scranton Railway system. The Lackawanna and Wyoming Valley Railroad, commonly referred to as the Laurel Line, was built as an interurban passenger and freight carrier to Wilkes-Barre. Its Scranton station, offices, powerhouse and maintenance facility were built on the former grounds of the Lackawanna Steel Company, and operations started in 1903. Beginning in 1907, Scrantonians could also ride trolley cars to the northern suburbs of Clark's Summit and Dalton. They could travel to Lake Vanola and Montrose using the Northern Electric Railroad. After the 1920s, no new trolley lines were built, but bus operations were started and expanded to meet service needs. In 1934, Scranton Railways was reincorporated as the Scranton Transit Company, reflecting that shift in transportation modes. Starting in the early 1920s, the Scranton Button Company, founded in 1885 and a major maker of shellac buttons, became one of the primary makers of phonograph records. They pressed records for Emerson, whom they bought in 1924, as well as Regal, Cameo, Romeo, Banner, Domino, Conqueror. In July 1929, the company merged with Regal, Cameo, Banner, and the U.S. branch of Path Makers of Path and Perfect to become the American Record Corporation. By 1938, the Scranton Company was also pressing records for Brunswick, Melatone, and Vocalion. In 1946, the company was acquired by Capitol Records, which continued to produce phonograph records through the end of the vinyl era. By the mid-1930s, the city population had swelled beyond 140,000 due to growth in the mining and silk textile industries. World War II created a great demand for energy, which led to the highest production from mining in the area since World War I. Topic post World War II 1946 to 1984 After World War II, coal lost favor to oil and natural gas as a heating fuel, largely because the latter types were more convenient to use. While some U.S. cities prospered in the post-war boom, the fortunes and population of Scranton and the rest of Lackawanna and Luzerne counties began to diminish. Coal production and rail traffic declined rapidly throughout the 1950s, causing a loss of jobs. The Knox Mine disaster of January 1959 virtually ended the mining industry in northeastern Pennsylvania. The waters of the Susquehanna River flooded the mines. The DL&W Railroad, nearly bankrupted by the drop in coal traffic and the effects of Hurricane Diane, merged in 1960 with the Erie Railroad. Demand for public transportation also declined as new highways were built by federal subsidies and people purchased automobiles. In 1952, the Laurel Line ceased passenger service. The Scranton Transit Company, whose trolleys had given the city its nickname, transferred all operations to buses as the 1954 holiday season approached. By 1968, it ceased all operations. The city was left without any public transportation system until the Lackawanna County government formed Colts, which began operations in 1972 with 1940s era GM buses from New Jersey. Scranton had been the hub of its operations until the Erie Lackawanna merger, after which it no longer served in this capacity. This was another severe blow to the local labor market. The NYO and W Railroad, which depended heavily on its Scranton branch for freight traffic, was abandoned in 1957. Mine subsidence was a spreading problem in the city as pillar supports in abandoned mines began to fail, cave ins sometimes consumed entire blocks of homes. The area was left scarred by abandoned coal mining structures, strip mines, and massive comb dumps, some of which caught fire and burned for many years until they were extinguished through government efforts. In 1970, the Secretary of Mines for Pennsylvania suggested that so many underground voids had been left by mining underneath Scranton that it would be more economical to abandon the city than make them safe. In 1973, the last mine operations in Lackawanna County which were in what is now McDade Park, and another on the Scranton-Dixon City line were closed. 
During the 1960s and 1970s, the silk and other textile industries shrank as jobs were moved to the south or overseas. In 1962, businessman Alex Grass opened his first Thrift D Discount Center drugstore on Lackawanna Avenue in downtown Scranton. The 17 by 75 foot 5 by 23 meters store, an immediate success, was the progenitor of the Rite Aid National Drugstore chain. During the 1970s and 1980s, many downtown storefronts and theaters became vacant. Suburban development followed the highways, and suburban shopping malls became the dominant venues for shopping and entertainment. Topic stabilization and restoration 1985, Since the mid-1980s, the city has emphasized revitalization. Local government and much of the community at large have adopted a renewed interest in the city's buildings and history. Some historic properties have been renovated and marketed as tourist attractions. The Steamtown National Historic Site captures the area's once prominent position in the railroad industry. The former DL&W train station was restored as the Radisson Lackawanna Station Hotel. The Electric City Trolley Museum was created next to the DL&W yards that the Steamtown NHS occupies. Since the mid-1980s the Scranton Cultural Centre has operated the architecturally significant Masonic Temple and Scottish Rite Cathedral, designed by Raymond Hood, as the region's performing arts centre. The Houdini Museum was opened in Scranton in 1990 by nationally known magician Dorothy Dietrich. In 2003, Hilton Hotels and Resorts opened the Hilton Scranton Hotel and Conference Center at the corner of Adams Avenue and Lackawanna Avenue in the heart of downtown Scranton. Due to the rage for paranormal-themed television shows, a popular downtown historic Scranton Ghost Walk has been expanded to operate 365 days a year. Other attractions include the Montage Mountain Ski Resort formerly Snow Mountain, the Wilkes-Barre, Scranton Penguins, all affiliate of the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Scranton, Wilkes-Barre Railriders formerly the Scranton, Wilkes-Barre Yankees and, before that, the Scranton, Wilkes-Barre Red Barons, AAA affiliate of the New York Yankees, and their PNC Field, and the Toyota Pavilion at Montage Mountain Concert Venue. According to The Guardian, the city was close to bankruptcy in July 2012, with the wages of all municipal officials, including the mayor and fire chief, being cut to $7.25 per hour. Financial consultant Gary Lewis, who lives in Scranton, was quoted as estimating that on 5 July the city had just $5,000 cash in hand. Since the revitalization began, many coffee shops, restaurants, and bars have opened in the downtown, creating a vibrant nightlife. The low cost of living, pedestrian-friendly downtown, and the construction of loft-style apartments in older, architecturally significant buildings have attracted young professionals and artists. Many are individuals who grew up in Scranton, moved to big cities after high school and college, and decided to return to the area to take advantage of its amenities. Geography <laughs> <laughs> Scranton is located at 41 degrees 24 minutes 38 seconds north 75 degrees 40 minutes 3 seconds west 41.410629/75.667411 Its total area of 25.4 square miles 66 square kilometers includes 25.2 square miles 65 square kilometers of land and 0.2 square miles 0.52 square kilometers of water according to the United States Census Bureau Scranton is drained by the Lackawanna River center city is about 750 feet 229 meters above sea level although the hilly cities inhabited portions range about from 650 to 1400 feet 200 to 430 meters the city is flanked by mountains to the east and west whose elevations range from 1,900 to 2,100 feet 580 to 640 meters. Topic. Climate Scranton has a humid continental climate Copen DFA, DFB, with four distinct seasons. Summers have occasional heat waves bringing temperatures well above 90 degrees Fahrenheit 32 degrees Celsius, while winters can have cold snaps bringing temperatures below 0 degrees Fahrenheit minus 18 degrees Celsius. 
The monthly daily average temperature in January, the coldest month, is 25.8 degrees Fahrenheit minus 3.4 degrees Celsius, while the same figure in July, the warmest month, is 71.4 degrees Fahrenheit 21.9 degrees Celsius. Extremes in temperatures have ranged from 103.2 degrees Fahrenheit 40 degrees Celsius on July 9, 1936 down to minus 21 degrees Fahrenheit minus 29 degrees Celsius on January 21, 1994. There is an average of only 9.2 days of 90 degrees Fahrenheit 32 degrees Celsius plus highs, 37 days where the high fails to rise above freezing, and 3 days of sub minus 0 degrees Fahrenheit minus 18 degrees Celsius lows. Precipitation is generally slightly greater during late spring and summer, while winter is generally the driest. On average, each month sees 10 to 13 days of precipitation, and the mean annual total is 38.23 inches Snowfall is variable, with some winters bringing light snow and others bringing numerous snowstorms. For the 1981–2010 period, snowfall has averaged 42 inches per year, with January and February accounting for the majority of the seasonal total. On average, the first and last dates of measurable 0.1 in or 0.25 cm snowfall are November 15 and April 4, respectively, with snow in October a rare occurrence. Adjacent municipalities Demographics As of the 2010 census, there were 76,089 people, 30,069 households, and 18,124 families residing in the city. The population density was 3006 per square miles, 1161 per square kilometers. There were 33853 housing units at an average density of 1342 per square miles, 518 per square kilometers. The racial makeup of the city was 84.11% white, 5.45% African American, 0.23% Native American, 2.98% Asian, 0.04% Pacific Islander, 4.69% from other races, and 2.49% from two or more races. Hispanic or Latino of any race make up 9.90% of the population. There were 30,069 households out of which 24.4% had children under the age of 18 living with them, 39.8% were married couples living together, 13.8% had a female householder with no husband present, and 42.1% were non-families. The city had 36.7% of its households with single occupancy and 18.1% whose individuals was aged at least 65. The average household size was 2.29 and the average family size was 3.01. The age distribution of the population included 20.8% under 18, 12.3% from 18 to 24, 25.5% from 25 to 44, 21.2% from 45 to 64, and 20.1% at least 65. The median age was 39. For every 100 females, there were 87.0 males. For every 100 females aged at least 18, there were 83.0 males. The median income for a household in the city was $28,805, and the median income for a family was $41,642. Males had a median income of $30,829 versus $21,858 for females. The per capita income for the city was $16,174. Found below the poverty line are 15.0% of the population, 10.7% of families, 18.9% of those under age 18 and 12.0% of those at least age 65. As of the 2006 American Community Survey, the average family size is 2.95. Of the population that's 25 years old and over, 83.3% of them have graduated from high school, 18.7% of them have a bachelor's degree or higher. In labor force population 16 years and over, 57.6% .6 of them work. The per capita income in 2006 inflation adjusted dollars is $17,187. 
Topic: Public safety. Topic: Fire department. The Bureau of Fire was incorporated as a paid service in 1901. It is a full-time service consisting of about 130 firefighters. Its headquarters is on Mulberry Street in Central City. The fire department has eight fire stations, which are located in the city's south side, Central City, the Pinebrook section, west side, North Scranton, Bulls Head, and on East Mountain. It has nine firefighting vehicles, including six engines, two trucks, and one rescue engine. Due to recent changes in staffing in early 2011, Engine Company No. 9 and Engine Company No. 15 was closed and, at times, some remaining companies are left unmanned due to lack of manpower. Topic police The Scranton Police Patrol Division is broken down into three shifts. Police headquarters is located on South Washington Avenue in downtown Scranton. Special units include arson investigations, auto theft task force, child abuse investigation, crime scene investigation, criminal investigation, juvenile unit, special investigations unit, special operations group, SWAT, SOG, K-9 unit, community development and highway unit. The police department has recently opened two new satellite stations. The highway unit was relocated to one new station at N. Kaiser Avenue and Morgan Highway. The second was opened at the Valley View Housing Complex. There are plans for at least one more, and possibly two. Culture Media The Scranton, Wilkes-Barre area is the 55th largest U.S. television market. Local television stations include WNEP-TV ABC Affiliate WBRE-TV NBC Affiliate WYOU-TV CBS Affiliate WVIA-TV PBS Affiliate Wolf-TV Fox Affiliate WQMY-My Network TV Affiliate WSWBCW Affiliate WQPX Ion Television Affiliate Local Public Access Television and Government Access Television ECTV programming is aired on Comcast Cable TV channels 19 and 21. Scranton hosts the headquarters of Times Shamrock Communications, which publishes the city's major newspaper, The Times Tribune, a Pulitzer Prize-winning broadsheet daily founded in 1870. Times Shamrock also publishes The Electric City, a weekly entertainment tabloid, and The Citizen's Voice, a daily tabloid based in Wilkes-Barre. Times Leader is a daily paper that primarily covers nearby Wilkes-Barre. The Times Leader also publishes Go Lackawanna, a Sunday newspaper serving Scranton and surrounding municipalities, and The Weekender is a Wilkes-Barre-based entertainment tabloid with distribution in Scranton. The Aquinas is the weekly student newspaper of the University of Scranton. The Scranton Post is a weekly general interest broadsheet which bills itself as the city's first online newspaper. There are several other print publications with a more narrow focus, including the Union News, La Voz Latina, and Milanian News. The Scranton, Wilkes-Barre radio market is ranked number 71 in the country by Arbitron. Sports Scranton's professional sports date to 1887, when the minor league Scranton Indians became the city's first professional baseball team. Many more followed, including teams in the Pennsylvania State League, Eastern League, Atlantic League, New York State League, New York Penn League and the New York Pennsylvania League. The Scranton, Wilkes-Barre Railriders of the International League play their home games at PNC Field in Music, south of Scranton. The Railriders are the defending North Division, International League, and AAA national champions. In football, the Scranton Eagles, a semi-pro, minor league team, dominate their Empire Football League, having won 11 championships. The former arena football Wilkes-Barre, Scranton Pioneers, who played eight seasons at the Mohegan Sun Arena, formerly Wachovia Arena in Wilkes-Barre Township had made the playoffs in their last six years of existence and contended for the Arena Cup 8 in 2007 and the Arena Cup X in 2009, their final year, but lost both times. 
Another semi-pro, minor league team the Northeast Pennsylvania Miners of the Big Northeast Football Federation started play in the area in 2007. The Nipa Shock are a semi-pro, minor league team that currently operate out of the Dixon City Borough. The Shock were established in 2012 and participate in arena-style football as a member of the Great Eastern Football Association. Scranton previously had pro basketball teams, including the Scranton Apollos, Scranton Miners and Scranton Zappers. Syracuse University men's basketball coach Jim Boheim played for the Miners before turning to coaching. In 2012, the city played host to the Scranton, Wilkes Barre Steamers of the Premier Basketball League. The team went inactive after that season, and no professional teams played in the city. In 2018, the Scranton Shamrocks joined the American Basketball Association 2000 present, once again bringing professional basketball to the region. Professional ice hockey arrived in 1999 when the Wilkes-Barre, Scranton Penguins of the American Hockey League began play at the Mohegan Sun Arena at Casey Plaza formerly Wachovia Arena in Wilkes-Barre Township. The team won conference championships in 2001, 2004, and 2008. The Electric City Shock SC semi professional soccer team was founded in 2013 as part of the National Premier Soccer League. The team is on the fourth tier of the American Soccer Pyramid and plays at the University of Scranton's Fitzpatrick Field. Waters Armory in Scranton hosted World Heavyweight Championship fight between titlist Larry Holmes and challenger, European champion Lucien Rodriguez of France on 27 March 1983. Holmes retained his title via a unanimous 12 round decision without losing a single round in any official scorecard. Starting in 2014, Scranton also became home to the Skyliners Drum and Bugle Corps, a professional marching drum corps in the Drum Corps Associate Circuit. They compete with other corps throughout the nation, as well as play multiple community parades, events, and performances. The Skyliners have won numerous awards for their performances, including national and world open titles. Topic landmarks and attractions Many of Scranton's attractions celebrate its heritage as an industrial center in iron and coal production and its ethnic diversity. The Scranton iron furnaces are remnants of the city's founding industry and of the Scranton family's Lackawanna Steel Company. The Steamtown National Historic Site seeks to preserve the history of railroads in the Northeast. The Electric City Trolley Museum preserves and operates pieces of Pennsylvania streetcar history. The Lackawanna Coal Mine Tour at McDade Park, conducted inside a former mine, describes the history of mining and railroads in the Scranton area. The former DL&W passenger station is now the Radisson Lackawanna Station Hotel. Museums in Scranton include the Everhart Museum in Ney August Park, which houses a collection of natural history, science and art exhibits, and the Houdini Museum, which features films, exhibits, and a stage show in a unique, century-old building. Terence Powderly's house, still a private dwelling, is one of the city's many historic buildings and, with Steamtown, the city's other national historic landmark. In addition, the Lackawanna Historical Society, founded in 1886 and located at the George H. Catlin House in Scranton's Hill section, focuses on the history of Lackawanna County. Tripp House, built by the Tripp family in 1771, is the oldest building in the city. The city's religious history is evident in the Basilica of the National Shrine of St. Anne, which draws thousands of pilgrims to its annual novena, and St. Stanislaus Cathedral, the seat of the Polish National Catholic Church in North America. The history of the founding of this denomination is tied to Polish immigration to Scranton in the late 19th century. Since the 1970s, Scranton has hosted La Festa Italiana, a three-day Italian festival that takes place on Labor Day weekend on the Courthouse Square. The festival originally took place around Columbus Day, but was moved because Scranton generally receives cold weather in October. Scranton's large Irish population is represented in the annual St. Patrick's Day Parade, first held in 1862. Organized by the St. Patrick's Day Parade Association of Lackawanna County, it is the nation's fourth largest in attendance and second largest in per capita attendance. Held on the Saturday before St. Patrick's Day, the parade includes more than 8,000 people, including floats, bagpipe players, high school bands and Irish groups. In 2008, attendance estimates were as high as 150,000 people. For recreation, there is Montage Mountain Ski Resort, known as Snow Mountain for a short period, which rivals the numerous resorts of the Poconos in popularity and offers a relatively comprehensive range of difficulty levels. 
The 26.2 mile .2 km Steamtown Marathon has been held each October since 1996 and finishes in downtown Scranton. Nay August Park is the largest of several parks in Scranton and was designed by Frederick Law Olmsted, who also laid out Central Park in Manhattan, New York City. The city is the home to numerous artistic organizations, including the Scranton Fringe Festival a performing arts festival held in the downtown section of the city in fall. Scranton's primary concert venue is the Toyota Pavilion at Montage Mountain, a partially covered amphitheater that seats 17,500. Its summer concerts have included James Taylor, Dave Matthews Band, and many other musical acts. Scranton Cultural Center at the Masonic Temple is an impressive piece of architecture which houses several auditoriums and a large ballroom. It hosts the Northeast Philharmonic, Broadway Theater and other touring performances. In popular culture The city is the subject of George Innes's 1855 painting, The Lackawanna Valley, which hangs in the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. The Harry Chapin song, 30,000 Pounds of Bananas, is about an actual fatal 1965 accident in Scranton, where a driver hauling bananas lost control of his truck as it barreled down Music Street. The city is the setting for the Scranton branch of the fictional paper company Dunder Mifflin on NBC's The Office. The Scranton branch is the setting for the majority of the episodes of the television show. The city is imagined as a member of the class of interstellar Okies in James Blish's 1962 novel, A Life for the Stars, in which 2273 AD Scranton, equipped with a space drive, flies away and leaves an impoverished Earth behind. Transportation <inaudible> 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 The main highways that serve Scranton are Interstate 81, which runs north to Binghamton, New York and Ontario and south to Wilkes-Barre, Harrisburg and Tennessee, Interstate 84, which runs east to Milford and New England states, Interstate 380, which runs southwest to Pocono Pines and Interstate 80 east to New York City and west to San Francisco, Interstate 476, Pennsylvania Turnpike Northeast Extension, which runs south to Allentown and Philadelphia, U.S. Route 6, which runs east to Carbondale, Honesdale and parallel to I-84 to New England states and west to Erie, and U.S. Route 11, which runs parallel to I-81. Scranton's provider of public transportation is the County of Lackawanna Transit System Colts. Colts buses provide extensive service within the city and more limited service that reaches in all directions to Carbondale, Daleville, Pittston, and Fleetville. The other busing company is the Luzerne County Transportation Authority LCTA, which mainly runs through the Manuka section closest to Luzerne County and downtown Scranton by the mall at Steamtown. LCTA takes passengers from Scranton to Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs in Plains. The Wilkes-Barre, Scranton International Airport is located in nearby Avoca. The airport is serviced by American Airlines, Delta, and United. Mart's Trailways and Greyhound Lines provide coach bus transportation from its downtown station to New York City, Philadelphia and other places in the Northeast. Private operators such as Poston Taxi and McCarthy Flowered Cabs service the Scranton area. They are hired by telephone through Central Dispatch and cannot be hailed on the street as in larger cities. Topic railroads Rail transportation, vital to the city's historic growth, remains important today. The Norfolk Southern Railway runs freight trains on the former Delaware, Lackawanna and Western line between Scranton and Binghamton, having taken over operations from the Canadian Pacific Railway Delaware and Hudson Railway Division in 2015. The Reading Blue Mountain and Northern Railroad serves the former DL&W Kaiser Valley branch in the city. The Delaware-Lackawanna Railroad, as designated operator of county-owned rail lines, oversees the former Delaware and Hudson Line from Scranton north to Carbondale, the former DL&W Line east to the Delaware Water Gap and the former Lackawanna and Wyoming Valley Railroad third rail interurban streetcar line south to Montage Mountain, Music. These lines host the seasonal passenger trains of both the Steamtown National Historic Site and the Electric City Trolley Museum and are under the jurisdiction of the Pennsylvania Northeast Regional Rail Authority. 
The PNRRA was created by Lackawanna County and Monroe County to oversee the use of common rail freight lines in northeastern Pennsylvania, including one formerly owned by Conrail running from Scranton, through the Pocono Mountains towards New Jersey and the New York City market. One of its primary objectives is to re-establish rail passenger service to Hoboken, New Jersey and thence by connection to New York. As of 2011, regular passenger train service to Scranton is slated to be restored under a plan to extend New Jersey Transit NJ Transit service from Hoboken via the Lackawanna cutoff. The trains would pass the Lackawanna Station building and pull in at a new Scranton station on Lackawanna Avenue along the northernmost track east of Bridge 60 the railroad bridge over the Lackawanna River and the Cliff Street underpass. Education Topic Primary and Secondary Education The city's public schools are operated by the Scranton School District SSD which serves almost 10,000 students The city has two public high schools for grades 9 to 12 Scranton High School just northwest of the downtown and West Scranton High School located on the west side of the city The district also has three public middle schools for grades 6 to 8 Northeast Intermediate South Scranton Intermediate and West Scranton Intermediate in addition, SSD maintains 12 public elementary schools for grades K-5. Scranton has two private high schools, Scranton Preparatory School, a private Jesuit school, and Yeshiva BAI's Moshe, an ultra-Orthodox school. Holy Cross High School in Dunmore is a Catholic high school operated by the Diocese of Scranton that serves students in Scranton and the surrounding area. The diocese also operates several private elementary schools in the city. Protestant schools that serve the Scranton area include Abington Christian Academy, Canaan Christian Academy, the Geneva School, Summit Academy, and Triborough Christian Academy. The Pennsylvania Department of Education provides oversight for the Scranton School for Deaf and Hard of Hearing Children. Penn Foster High School, a distance education high school, is headquartered in Scranton. Scranton, West Scranton, Scranton Prep and Holy Cross all compete athletically in Pennsylvania's Lackawanna League which is a part of District 2 of the Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic Association. <laughs> Colleges and universities The city hosts five colleges and universities, the University of Scranton, Geisinger Commonwealth School of Medicine, Johnson College, Lackawanna College, Marywood University, and one technical school, Fortis Institute. The Pennsylvania State University operates a Commonwealth campus, Penn State Scranton, north of the city, in the borough of Dunmore. Penn Foster Career School, a distance education vocational school, is headquartered in Scranton. Topic. Libraries The Lackawanna County Library System administers the libraries in Scranton, including the Albright Memorial Library and the Lackawanna County Children's Library and the Nancy K. Holmes Library. As of 2008, Scranton libraries serve more than 96,000 people and have a circulation of over 547,000. Notable people Topic Government Topic Arts Topic Sports Topic Others Topic Sister Cities Scranton has the following official sister cities Bellina, County Mayo, Republic of Ireland, Guardia Lombardi, Campania, Italy, Balakovo, Saratov Oblast, Russia, Trnava, Slovakia Perugia, Umbria, Italy City of San Marino, San Marino Coronia, Sicily, Italy 
Topic. See also. Polish cathedral style. Scranton Army Ammunition Plant. Weston Field, Scranton. The Office. Equals equals notes. <laughs>